We live in, a, in an age when the barriers to entry in the entire media profession have now been catastrophically lowered, in my view. And uh, virtually anybody who is a blogger can become a columnist these days, extremely <laughs> alarming. And anybody with a smartphone can become a photographer, or thinks they can become a, yeah, yeah. a photographer, Andy. And so it's all the more important that we uh, celebrate tonight one of the very few people uh, who really knows what they are doing when they point a camera and uh, whose pictures can still explain events and capture moods and tell stories in a way that words simply cannot do. And I look at this incredible range of photos that you've assembled uh, tonight and you know, we ask ourselves, don't we, you know, how has Andy done it all? What's the, what's the key to his success? What has, he, what has he got? Is it because he has the lion-hearted bravery of a Don McCullen combined with a tact of Mario Testino and the sheer compositional flair of Henri de Cartier-Bresson. I think, I think quite possibly, I think quite possibly it is. But it's also, as he's just explained, it's luck. It's also, no, it's not, it's not luck. It's partly luck, but it's also more important it's because he is a ruthless bamboozler of his subjects and those to whom he purports to come close. And uh, he expertly manipulates the vanity uh, of the politicians that he photographs. Does the abs say, oh, just hold this banana. Anna, Mr. Miliband. <laughs> I, uh, I think you look. I think you look absolutely superb with a bacon sandwich, man of the people. <laughs> just, just, just sit next to. Him. That's what he gave the game away, didn't he? He gave, just sit next nearer the door. Go on, just a little bit nearer. That's what he told me. A fool, <laughs> fool I was. And I've got you objecting, you objecting. He says, "We well, he says, he says, he says, would I stitch you up? <laughs> would I stitch you up? And, and then when you really, when you really object, he says. I'm only trying to get you in the papers. <laughs> in fact, he, he acquired such a general reputation for ruthlessness that you may recall there was an attempt to buy him up. Do you remember that? <laughs> By the apparatus of the state. And as Velasquez, as Diego Velasquez was to the court of Felipe II, and as Sandro Botticelli was to Lorenzo de' Medici, so was Andy Parsons to the court of our Prime Minister, if you were, or he was. <laughs> and uh, to this day, it's absolutely true. And he recall he was he was the he was the portrait portrait maker in residence. And uh, to this day, his his mean, moody, magnificent studies of of uh, you know whatever it happens to be, Dave and Ed Llewellyn preparing a speech on Europe or, or something like that. They are they are they are auctioned, aren't they? They are auctioned at, for. Tens of thousands are, of pounds, tens of thousands no, of pounds, no, alarm, not at, maybe at conservative <laughs> fundraising balls. And I ask you, what do they think, those oligarchs from Russia? <laughs> when, they, they, when they reach into their pockets and they lash out for these, do they think? Do they think that they are buying influence in the Tory Party, my friends? <laughs> No, is the answer, by the way, to that. <laughs> the obvious. Do they think they're buying friends in high places? No. What are they buying? They're buying an original, 100% authentic Parsons uh, to hang with the Picasso on the wall of their super, their super yacht. Of the and of the loo on their super yacht. And, uh, and, they're, and they're, they're quite right in so doing, aren't they? Uh, but they're fantastic photos, and I think we can all see tonight Freedom. how fantastic they are at this exhibition. Congratulations, Andy, on your achievements, and do I declare this exhibition open? I declare it, <laughs> I declare it even more open than it already is. <laughs>